Auburn basketball wins the SEC. Here's what you can expect moving forward. Auburn fans also, can they get something out of the Duke-UNC debacle that happened over the weekend? And what should we think about Auburn baseball's series sweep over the weekend? All in today's Locked on Auburn. You are Locked on Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, joined as we are every Monday by the Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects and writes for AuburnDaily.com. The basketball team, they said they didn't want to share anything. They wanted to be selfish, and they got their wish as they defeated South Carolina Gamecocks to secure that one-game finish in the SEC regular season, locking up that one seed, and what an exciting Saturday it was. Yeah, I mean, that was something to to not even make it dramatic. I mean, wire to wire, and yeah, it got a, it got a little bit dicey at times, but for the most part, Auburn came in, did what it needed to do, and yep. won in pretty convincing fashion and kind of showed that Maybe some of the questions we've had about some of the road trips are behind them now that we're doing nothing but neutral site from here on out. Yep, yep. The whole road situation will go away, unless it's a thing that's away from Auburn Arena, but I just don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. And so, yeah, like you said, South Carolina, I believe, got within two during that final stretch of the first half. Then Auburn got hot towards the end, and then the second half was pretty much all Tigers and it was a situation where it's like, we can enjoy this. You can enjoy the last 15 minutes of this game and just kind of when it was what was going to happen. Auburn basketball did not drop the uh, confetti too early this year, which is exciting. That's a nice plus because we've been there before. We have reps doing this now, which is exciting, which is very, very exciting to see. So uh, moving forward, like I said, Auburn secures that one seed. And so what does that mean? They will play Friday. At 11 o'clock Central Time Ugh. in the uh, the third round of the tournament, the quarterfinals, and they will face the winner of 8-seed Texas A&M or 9-seed Florida. And I don't want to speak on behalf of all Auburn people, and I can't wait to ask Zepp this question for tomorrow's show, but I think most Auburn fans would rather see the Tigers take on Texas A&M. If Walker Kessler, if there's any questions about Walker Kessler's shoulder, I don't want to face Castleton. Does he look I know off to you? Uh, Kessler doesn't look off to me. I saw people talking on Twitter. It's like you could tell his injuries bother him. I'm like, I'm not seeing that. I, I did not see that the last few games. Not necessarily saying that that like it's visibly bothering him, but you can kind of see the difference in before and after the Tennessee game as far as production. The production has not come back to where it was before Tennessee. And part of that is Jabari having, what, for the last five games, scored over 20 points and things like that. But yeah, right. it's still something where I'm not one of those people that says like, oh yeah, I have to have the moment of coming back and getting vengeance against the team that bought you, Texas, or the team that beat you. Texas a and is an easier matchup. Let's get, give me the culty Aggies over the Florida Gators. Yeah, I, I just don't love the matchup there. And then I think Auburn took care of business against the Aggies earlier in the season. Going into that last game of the conference season, though, if Mississippi State would have beaten AM, Auburn would have been able to face the winner between Mississippi State and South Carolina. And it also would have moved LSU to the other side of the bracket instead of Al- and Alabama would have been on Auburn's side of the bracket. And so, like, you know, when we were doing after the game, Live on ESPN 167. That's also in the, the audio feed if you're interested in that on Locked On Auburn's podcast feed if you want to check out the raw reaction to the game. So but good. I was I was like, you know, hey, going into that, Auburn fans should be pulling for state, but it didn't happen. So um, because of that, they will place uh, face the winner of AM and Florida. So I, I, I think this is going to be a good situation. I think Florida plays with a pretty physical approach. And so regardless of who wins, you kind of hope, and this is why buys are so valuable at this point of the season, you kind of hope that these two teams just beat each other up and are super physical because they have to play again the next day. And I think that's kind of what Auburn needs to be hoping for. And I think it's a super realistic thing to expect. 
I remember a few years ago when Auburn played four SEC tournament games in four days. And at the end of it, you know, and they had that loss, I think it was to Kentucky in, in that fourth game. And just the comments post game from Bruce Pearl about how just how physically demanding it is to play Not- so many games, even just a back to back, never mind three or four. And to bring in the labor sports stuff real quick. Like that's why the NBA players specifically negotiated less back, like very few back to backs in NBA schedules anymore is because of the toll it takes on you. So that does nothing either way. Auburn is going to be favored to win, whether it's Texas A&M or Florida, but give me a and I don't need the redemption story of beating the team that beat you. Yeah. I bet the team wants Florida again. Oh yeah, that's that's the personality of this team. Exactly, yes, their personality, and that's like you know you talk to those folks uh, as soon as uh, as soon as they lost to Arkansas, which they'll probably get a chance to play Arkansas again as we look at the bracket more in a second. But um, there's a real chance, Lindsay, that they play Florida again, Arkansas again, and Tennessee again. That is a very (laughs) real chance. I'm serious. Like you look at it, and all that needs to happen is Arkansas beat LSU unless Ole Miss or Missouri pull up something crazy, which I don't think they will. So, like, that's going to happen. And then Tennessee needs to upset, quote-unquote, upset Kentucky. Like, both of those things could very easily happen. And if Auburn takes care of its business, what a story that would be. Not only do you get a chance to go in, you, you've you already won the regular season. You have a chance to win the tournament while getting vengeance on the three conference losses you suffered this season. Uh, this, I think if, if Auburn did that, okay. if, if that happened, I think that would submit this team as like heels. Like th- these are, we are the villains of the sec. Like they're loud, they're brash, they're really good. And they just come at you incessantly. Zep Jasper is annoyingly like close aggressive. defensively. Yeah. yeah annoyingly right. aggressive. Like, mm-hmm. and and like that would just submit this team entering the NCAA tournament as like the villains of college basketball, and I am here for it. I am ready to be the bad guy. Oh, I, I think it'd be awesome. I think it would be fun. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun bracket. I think. I think if Auburn can get past their first matchup, and if it's if it's A and M, you know, I'm really not concerned about it. But and maybe I shouldn't be. I mean, Auburn is a better basketball team than Florida. Like Florida had to have everything go right. And Auburn had to go cold for like 30 of the 40 minutes of play for Florida to win that game. And so, you know, we'll see. Does Florida have any kind of home court advantage with it being in Tampa? I'm leaning towards no. Would it be in Friday at 11 o'clock? Like probably not. No. But still, I, you know, I think that is a question worth asking. But you said no pretty quickly to that. Yeah, no. It's to me, the the home field advantage you get the home field advantage when it's your city and it's like 75, 80% your fans. Uh, a neutral site, even though you're going to see quite a few Florida folks there. Uh, one, having lived in Florida, Gainesville to, was it Tampa you said? Yeah, Gainesville Tampa. to Tampa yeah. is still a couple hours. Like It's not like it's just down the street. Uh, but the home field advantage comes from the combination of it's your campus, your fans, your house, you sleep in your own bed the night before, and none of that's going to happen. And so, in the past, we've seen Tennessee kind of get that bump when it's in Nashville, but I don't think that's a similar situation here. Yeah, I don't. It's it's not. That's a little bit different as far as proximity. I mean, sure. Florida, Florida to uh, Gainesville to Tampa. That's not a. You're not day tripping that. You right. you don't want to spend that long in the car, especially for eleven o'clock tip. So you're I don't right. think that's going to be a thing, yeah, especially I'm, during spring break. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Hey, other big basketball news happened throughout the country. The, the Duke-UNC thing was really interesting. UNC ruining Coach K's retirement party. I want to talk about something regarding that that Auburn fans can look at and possibly look forward to something in the future. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Football's over, but obviously basketball is here. It is March. We will sleep in May. And I tell you what, the best way to experience these next few weeks is by getting involved in the action at Bet Online. So go to betonline.net and you will see that Bet Online remains the best spot for all your sports scores and news and anything you need betting this season. Head over to Bet Online where the game starts. 
And also, as we're talking about getting prepared for March Madness, you need to run over to runyourpool.com. If you're, are you looking for the usual place to run your bracket pool, or are you looking for the best? We've done our research, and we have determined that runyourpool.com is the best because it allows you to have so many different customizable features. Do you want certain things to be worth more points? Do you want it easy for people to join your group? There are so many different things that you have control over at runyourpool.com. And we believe that our hosts can take you guys on. So we want to invite you guys over to join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And you get a chance to play for a cash prize. And of course, while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family and enter pure madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there. Runyourpool.com slash locked on for a chance to win some cash money people. Lindsay, I don't know if you watched it Saturday night. I went to a local watering hole with my family because I just, it's the second best rivalry in sports. It's behind the Iron Bowl. I think it's the second best rivalry in sports. I love watching it. I have no, I cheer for different teams every time. You know, I just, I just enjoy the spectacle of it. Storylines. Yeah. But watching that, I could not help thinking about something. I just couldn't stop it. And I'm curious if it crossed your mind at all. Legendary coach, probably the best coach ever at his level. And this North Carolina team went into that house and had a chance to really ruin something. And they obviously did it. And I could not stop fantasizing five years, eight years, 10 years from now when Nick Saban is on his farewell tour and Auburn has the opportunity to go into Bryant Denny and ruin it. It will be the last game of the season. And I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome opportunity whenever that happens. One, bold of you to assume that uh, Nick Saban's going to tell anybody before he retires. Um, yeah, and that is a key part of this, right? The fact that yeah. Coach K is, is having a farewell tour. I think he will. Um, but regardless, anyway, continue on. If nothing else, simply for recruiting reasons, to show like this is my handpicked successor and the team's going to be fine. But no, um, we were watching in the press box at, at baseball. So I'm watching Trace Bright pitch. And we're just, we're like, oh my God, you guys, like UNC, like we have it on in the press box. UNC is going to be Duke. Yeah. And, and to me, what I loved is the dynamic of, and the UNC team, I, ha- I think a lot about this Auburn team and not from the perspective of, you know, we both had Walker Kessler because one of us used him and one of us didn't. Right. Uh, but Works the person used him, by the way, UNC. Thank yeah. You. Like pro tip, use Walker Kessler. He's good at basketball. Imagine um, how many we, points you would have beaten Duke by if you had him. But yeah, you know, oh imagine well. how few, how less points Duke would have scored. Like when he went to cut a net, he needed like one step on the ladder. It was wild. <laughs> like um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, but no. So so like UNC going into this environment, and you had celebrities there. You had former players there. Jerry Seinfeld is there. Like. What was that? Yeah, that was weird. Uh, yeah, like just ramming I mean, celebrities. There was a ticket for this that went at auction for like twenty four, so, so, so seventy five thousand dollars. Hilarious. Yeah, they lost. <laughs> and UNC goes into this environment. the The entire building, the entire city, is against them, and they go in and they handle business. Right. And it reminded me a lot of kind of what I feel like when everybody's at full health and everything's clicking, what this Auburn basketball team is like, right? This Auburn basketball team storylines. They're not afraid. They don't care that, Oh, Auburn hasn't won at LSU since whenever they don't, you know, they don't care about, Oh, Oscar Shibway's a player of the year candidate, whatever. I don't care. I'll still block six of his shots. Who cares? Well, that and, was the thing that, 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 that I loved. Sorry to cut you off, but like Zep doesn't care that Kentucky was Kentucky. And once again, it kind of goes back to the, the the personality of this team of they're just there to beat you, and that's it. They're like, hey, we're really good at basketball. We're going to play a basketball game, and if you can stop us, yeah, good luck. And, I mean, and that's what I'll and, – and even it's stuff like you bring in a guy like a Leor Berman. You know, Chris Moore got a bunch of minutes on Saturday. He needs more. He needs more. I more. mean, but like – hustle like great hustle he did two like two three minute rotations first non-garbage time since like arkansas and just plus three and plus minus the man played six total minutes Mm -hmm. i mean just this team is 
when everything is clicking and when everything is working, Auburn basketball is the deepest team in the country, the most one of the most talented teams in the country. And I think we've been spoiled by the fact that when you watch this team take the court, Jabari Smith is the best person, like best player in the building. Right. And it's going to be like that at worst until the later stages of the NCAA tournament. And if this team, big if, I'm knocking on the wooden here, big if, yeah. if this team goes on to win a championship, my prediction is you're going to talk about Jabari Smith in the same vein as a Cam Newton, as a Bo Jackson, as far as being the oh, most talented person at all times. For does, does, okay, I thought about this. The whole Jabari, can he be in the same lore as Cam kind of thing? I don't think he can. I, I'm just putting yeah. this out there. I don't think he can. If he went, one thing, he has to win the Naismith, yeah. which he has a chance to. I think they released their final list of five, I believe. So he, like he's in it. But I think it's stuff like this where, like, boy, that would be exciting. And, boy, that would be legendary and incredible. But I know we're doing this thing right now where it's like Auburn is a basketball school. But when something happens with football, you put basketball on pause and you focus on football for a few minutes. And I, I just don't think it would be the same level of magnitude as a cam or a bow or something like that. But, man, I hope I'm wrong. Because he deserves it. I mean, if if he wins the Naismith and Auburn gets 20-plus point games from him to get them to the championship and he scores in double digits, Auburn's down by two, second and a half left, and he well, has some sort of... Right now. You're just riding has, for a move. He has an inbounds play. Got it. Okay. Catch and shoot for a three to win it. You're going to see the print of that shot in downtown Auburn for 25 years. Yeah, and uh, and and I don't, th I can't think of another Auburn player where you could say that about any of them. But Jabari, you'll say it if it happens. Uh, if it happens, the one flaw in that story, that that beautiful story you just wrote, was Wendell has to get it to him. With two. <laughs> would Bruce draw up something for Jabari to shoot it? The last <laughs> I, that I can't I can't get mad because you're not wrong. <laughs> I can't get mad because you're not wrong. It's not happened yet. And, and I love Wendell, but and I, I don't think all of it's Wendell. I think some of it's coaching, but it's like we have not seen anything drawn up for Jabari in a in a game winning situation yet. So maybe what if they practice that every week and Bruce is just holding it for the ship? Yeah. He's holding it. He's like he's like, I'm not wasting Ooh. this. I'm not wasting this on a regular season against Missouri. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You know, if I'm breaking this play out, this is our annexation of Puerto Rico right here. If I'm breaking this out, it's for a championship. I'm, and I wouldn't even be mad. I'd be like, I, w it wouldn't a I wouldn't ask the question once, where has this been all year? I'd be like, there it is. Glad we got to see it one more time before he was done uh, with the college ball. So, no, that's fun. That's fun. We didn't really do the comparison to the whole uh, ruining Nick Saban's retirement party but maybe we'll touch on that later in the off season but right. people want basketball no that's fine people want basketball right now we're going to give it to them but actually we're done giving it to you for now seriously if you did not check out the post game show that's in locked on auburn's podcast feed go and check that out but hey what can we take away from auburn basketball series sweep one of all four games against rhode island Lindsay will break that down next stat hero is a big partner here throughout the Locked On Podcast Network. Stat Heroes NCAA single game pickums pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from the handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on the players you know with the best gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads, long odds, or funky props. If you feel good, like Lindsay said, the Jabari is about to go on this historic run. And you see that Stat Hero has Jabari at 18 points, and you're like, I want more than that. That's probably the that's probably a good bet. It's probably a good, good bet. So Stat Hero is the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fix. Go ahead and get in and get ready to rock and roll as championship week starts this week. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use the promo code. Locked on for 100% deposit match. That is stathero.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on, promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show also brought to you by Built Bar. 
Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Look, once again, preparing for March. Uh, I mean, let, let's just be clear here. Watching all of these games takes it out on you. You want to be charged up. You want to make sure that you have the protein in your body, ready to power through all of these extremely stressful situations that we're about to go through. But, uh, Built Bar can help you with all of that. Most of these bars are low in calories, high in protein. They make you feel good, folks. So go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Lindsey Crosby, before we jump into Auburn baseball recap, what all do you have going on, my friend? So, Locked on MLB Prospects is my show. You can follow it on Twitter at Locked on Farm. Uh, big week coming up this week. We're talking about minor league spring training starts tomorrow on Tuesday. We're talking about uh, college ball. I've got a great interview coming up with University of Albany shortstop and number three in the NCAA home run list, Brad Malm. Uh, we're also talking with our friends from the Rockies. We're talking with our friends from the Royals. Great cool. week going on. You can also check out all the Auburn baseball writing at Auburn Daily. I've got a great breakdown coming Wednesday of some of uh, Auburn baseball's pitching woes in the first inning, uh, as well as the merch at AUShirts.com. Yeah, we got a special right now with our uh, our portal season. So go to AUShirts.com and t- use uh, promo code PORTAL on the portal season shirt to check that out. We also made a championship shirt over at AUShirts.com, celebrating that regular season win. So check all that out at AUShirts.com. Lindsey, Auburn wins four games out of four, of course, against Rhode Island. And I need to be careful when I say these words. That may be the worst college baseball team I've ever seen. So they were were awful. Four games, Auburn scored 49 runs. Auburn allowed three. Auburn played 16 innings of baseball on Saturday and did not allow a single run. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, So I'm not going to go game through game through this whole thing. I just kind of want to talk about some of the trends, some of the stuff that I've noticed and and the good and the bad, the things I want to talk about. Uh, One, no cause for concern. If you watch Sunday's game, which was the only one of the four televised, what a shame. Uh, Thick King, Sonny Dechera was not in the game. Uh, bruised heel happened game one on Saturday. He will be fine. I've got confirmation of that uh, from the man himself. Uh, he will be fine. Just temporary absence. Uh, Auburn pitching is the big thing that we've all been looking for this uh, this season. We started Jordan Armstrong on Friday. We started uh, Joseph Gonzalez and Trace Bright on Saturday. Our three normal guys, our three weekend guys as of now. Uh, we started... Um, Hayden Mullins on Sunday, that was something where they were working to get him a start to kind of see what they had in in a Hayden Mullins. All weekend, Auburn pitchers looked really good. I believe the strikeout numbers for the entire weekend, I genuinely think we had more strikeouts than innings pitched. That's I'm, nice. You take that. I'm, Yeah, not not making that up. I, I, I want to say it was close to 50 strikeouts over the course of the weekend. Uh, so over four games. Yes. So we had, you know, we had 11 on Friday. We had game one on Saturday was 11 game two on Saturday was 10 and then seven innings. And then game four was 14. So yes. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Um, all th- three of the four pitchers had rough first innings and that's what I want to do a deep dive. So check out Auburn daily on Wednesday for more about that kind of about some of those first inning struggles. But um, Trace Bright is the guy. So I'm going to pick two MVPs from this weekend. Okay. The pitching MVP, Trace Bright. So six innings on Saturday in that, in that shortened seven game, game two. Um, one hit. Doesn't allow his hit until the fifth inning. He has a perfect game through five and a third. Which against I a terrible still- Rhode Island team. Yeah, I'm still kind of new to the whole press box. Like, can I? Am I allowed to talk about this? Like, can I mention it? Can I say it? I don't uh-huh. want to manifest it and have something go wrong. My wife left the game and took the kids home uh, right after she like walked out of the gates. He gave up a hit. So it's her fault. Oh, it was her um, fault. Right. Yeah. yeah, but no, six innings pitch, one hit, eight strikeouts, no walks on the season. Trace Bright has thrown 17 innings, six hits, one run, 19 strikeouts. So he's a guy last year. 
he picked up a lot of starts and a lot of innings that Butch Thompson did not plan for. Him and Joseph Gonzalez were the two guys that uh, they were not planned. It was not planned for them to be starters last year. And they did it. We saw the struggles Auburn baseball had last year. But now you can see the results of that labor. And I talked to Trace Bright after the game, after that, that second game of the doubleheader. And he said that he feels like the big evolution now from getting all that time last year is now he understands how his pitch arsenal, how he can use his pitch arsenal to get guys out. And Butch actually told me, he's like, I, because I asked Butch about it, I'm like, is, is it just me or was that really good? He said that was the best pitching performance Trace Bright has done in his three years at Auburn. And it wasn't something where it was good because it was Rhode Island. It was good because of his approach and what he did, whether it was sequencing, understanding how to use uh, different pitches to get leverage on different batters. He, uh, Butch said that start would look almost the exact same against an Old Miss, against an LSU, against wow. a Vanderbilt. That's an SEC like weekend quality start that will win you a game in the SEC. So I feel really good about that. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, a couple of the other pitchers struggled in the first inning, and that's what I need to see going forward. We've got two weeks until SEC play. We have a, a Tuesday night game that's probably going to get rained out against Middle Tennessee. We have a, a weekend matchup this upcoming week and a midweek next week. I need to see some of these pitchers. They look great after the first inning. Um, Joseph Gonzalez, my guy, love a Joseph Gonzalez, loaded right. the bases on Saturday in game one. In the first inning, got out of it, cruise control after that. But in that first inning, you load the bases against the Rhode Island, you load the bases against the Yale. What's an LSU going to do? Yeah. What's Hayden an Alabama going to do? On, on Sunday. Hayden Mullins did it on Sunday. Jordan Armstrong let, let two guys get on in the first on um, on Friday night. And so That's I want to see, tonight. I want to see going forward how you can correct that. Maybe it's just they don't like having a clean mound. I don't know. That's a thing with there's relievers who have talked about. When they've been asked to go in and open a game, that's the opener. They're just like, it sounds so dumb, but they're not used to having a clean and fresh mound and they struggle with that. Maybe it's just something where our grounds crew is so good, but they are that's good. What I'm, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want to see. Um, offensively, I feel really good about where this team was. Okay. Uh, Ryan Dial is, I think, my offensive MVP of the weekend. He's a catcher. He played two games in the outfield this weekend. Uh, part of that was because we got some guys back from injury, wanted to get some more guys in the lineup. Went six for 12, six runs, three doubles, two home runs, and 10 RBIs. Now, we scored 49 runs, yes, but you think about it, this man accounted for one-fifth of them by himself. Yeah. Um, made a, runny, made a running catch in the notch. gap. He dialed it up a notch. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. Um, he... um made a running catch in the outfield. And I asked him about it after the game. And he said that it's been a bit of a challenge to try to prepare for both catching and playing the outfield, but physical fitness wise, it's helping him out a lot. And Jake Wyatt, the defensive transfer catcher from Presbyterian, you got something for Jake Wyatt? Not yet. No. Dang. All right. Uh, Wyatt, has, uh, that's tough to do. That's, that's a tough hey, one. You got Jake. Yeah. I'm working anyway, on it. That's fine. So that, that, that Jake Wyatt, has been really good as far as so, so good defensively behind the plate. And then you saw him, his offense pick up this weekend, hit a two, uh, three run home run on Sunday. So Ryan's like, I'll play outfield. I'll play whatever I have to do to get his bat and his defense in the game. And so that's one of those character things. We talk about Auburn basketball kind of being kind of embracing that, that cocky, almost villain type role, Auburn baseball has kind of embraced that, like literally anything I have to do to make the team better, I will do it. You've seen guys that were starters last year step back into being backups or role players so that other players can get a chance, whether it's an incoming transfer um, or a younger guy can get a chance to start. So this team seems very humble. They seem very connected, very focused. Everybody came out of the dugout anytime somebody scored. I mean, they celebrated. They came out, they met them outside the dugout and celebrated anytime someone scored. My wife is like, is that a normal thing? I'm like, that's... A normal thing for this team. Yeah. That's something that this team does. So want to see a little more pitching consistency early, but I feel good about where we are with a week and a half to go entering conference play. Right. Yeah. So they, they go to Huntsville for a little non-con action, play with the trash pandas play, which is objectively fun. That's Tuesday. 
Then they return home for a, is it three game series? I assume it's a three game series against middle Tennessee. Three and game then, series. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you start looking ahead to Ole Miss, which is life comes at you fast. This is kind of what I hope doesn't happen. Uh, top five Ole Miss team, by the way, not, uh, not a slouch. And I got to say, they got some beautiful baby blue alternate uniforms. Love a good baby blue alternate. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but, um, Cool. No, I, I feel better about the offense. It's just the the pitching. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be an interesting thing. What is the deal with Sheehan? Is he going to be ready to be like a relevant contributor come SEC play, or is he still kind of rehabbing? So Sheehan, uh, so they had temporarily pulled him out of the rotation so that he could kind of make sure his mechanics were good, his fundamentals were sound. Uh, he actually, Sunday's game, he came in in the seventh, he pitched the 7th, the 8th, and the ninth. So something I was looking for him to do was get an appearance sometime this weekend. No hits, no runs, five strikeouts. Curveball looked back to what it usually is. Fastball seemed to be right around where it was at Notre Dame last year. Okay. So I think that was something where they didn't want to – they wanted him to get some work, but they didn't want him to have the pressure of, you're going to open this game up, and if you are bad, we could lose. Let's save him for a blowout. Let's put him in at the end. Let him just eat the rest of it. Give him a chance to stretch out as well. So, I mean, he got 47 pitches in on Sunday. I feel good about, like right now, if I'm picking a three, I'm picking Jordan Armstrong, Joseph Gonzalez, and Trace Bright as my three. I feel good knowing that you have a Sheehan there. Um, I, you know, and there's probably one or two other guys that you could put in spot starts if you need to, but I like that starting three, provided that Jordan Armstrong can give us a clean outing this upcoming Friday night. Lindsay, one more time. How can people find you here? You support you, all that good stuff, bud. I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. My show is on Twitter at Locked On Farm. You can check out the writing at Auburn Daily and the merch at AUShirts.com. Yes, 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 yes. Tomorrow will be a Charlie Tuesday with Auburn message board legend Charlie Five as well as we are expecting a conversation with SEC champion Zepp Jasper. I'm looking forward to introducing him as SEC champ Zepp Jasper. So we'll see if that happens. Follow me on Twitter at Z Blackerby, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Auburn.